Please open your missalettes to page 128 for our entrance antiphon. At the very top of the page on page 128, we'll be doing the optional memorial of St. Ephraim, deacon and doctor of the church. Please stand. Let the peoples recount the wisdom of the saints and let the church proclaim their praise. Their names will live on and on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Today we're celebrating the feast of a doctor of the church, St. Ephraim. I hid this book in our sacristy just to have a little bit more information about our doctors of the church. There's actually about 35, 36. This book was made when there was 33. And so St. Ephraim is one of the older doctors back in the 300s, but I love the names that they give him. He is the harp of the Holy Spirit and Mary's own singer. And so he was a deacon in the church and he was known for his theology and his poetry, and he even started a theology school. And there's enough of his writings and poems still around today that he is known to be a doctor of the church that to this day, he can educate us and bring us closer to God. So St. Ephraim, pray for us. Today's mass is for the family of Terry and Norma Patra, both living and deceased. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon, St. Ephraim, exalted in singing of your mysteries, and from whom he received the strength to serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, move on to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to go get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar, 
and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and to prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress. Have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart more than when grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your light shine before others that they may your heavenly Father. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand, where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, this gospel always brings a smile to my face because the acronym for our order is SALT, and we often say we are the salt of the earth rather than the salt of the earth. But with my Texas accent, it usually sounds like salt anyway. Today, I found myself reflecting on two phrases that I think sum up everything about our readings. The first one is, they will know you are Christians by your love. What makes us Christians? And what makes God, God? We say God is love. God is truth. God is good all the time. And yet so many people, contrary to them, when they start thinking, is God doing bad to me? <laughs> is, does God hate me? <laughs> He can't hate us. He is love incarnate. He is the source of love, and only love flows out from him. He cannot do bad. He's good incarnate. He only does good. But as Christians, 
And in the image of God, we become like God. The more we worship Him, the more we follow Him. So again, they will know you are Christians by your love, because God is love. Christ is love. In our first reading today, we have Elijah taking up residence with this widow, and she's pagan. She does not believe in our God. And yet, God sends Elijah to her care. <laughs> And the widow just immediately expects, this man is going to take my last meal from me. I was just about to enjoy a good pizza, and then that's it. Me, we're just going to wait to die. Well, not pizza per se, piece of bread. And yet, she assumes when Elijah wants that bread for himself, like the world usually does, he would take it and she would get nothing. He has to explain to her. The God he serves is a God of life, and a God of abundance, and a God of giving, and a God of love. And when she serves him and serves this God, all of that will be given to her. She gets a jar of flour and a jar of oil that never run out. They're abundant. She lives off of these two jars for a year with Elijah and, I believe, her son. And so again, we see the abundance of God. Elijah shows the abundance and love of God. And it's not just for Elijah, it's for us. When we serve others, they should see abundance in our serving, love overflowing in our serving, goodness, because we are tapped in to the God of all these things, who is these things incarnate. In our gospel today, Jesus talks about us being the salt of the earth. They didn't have refrigerators back then. They did not have ice boxes. What they did when they wanted to keep their meat from going bad was they rubbed salt on it, and it preserved it. And he's saying, what good is this salt if it doesn't do what it's made to do? And he's saying that we preserve everything, that God preserves us for eternal life. The closer we are to God, the more we can raise people's spirits to live forever. We can save their souls. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful analogy. But even the next part, we are the light of the world. Do you want to live in light or in darkness? And I laugh because I actually prefer the winters here. I want to sleep more. <laughs> but look at all of the life around us, all of the grass, all of the people outside. The summers are a celebration here. And God is the light that gives life to our earth and invites us to be a part of it, to be lights ourselves, getting, giving light to each other. You know you are Christians by our love. And I'll end with the second phrase that I mentioned. This phrase always comes to mind, you are what you eat. It's not a completely truthful phrase or I would look like a hamburger. And yet, when we eat things, it becomes a part of us. But it's more true philosophically. It's more true when we are taught by someone. I look like my parents because I was with them all the way through high school. And I love them, they changed my life, they brought me life, and now I talk like my mom and I'm trying to act like my dad. I'll let my family examine that one. But the more we love people and the more we understand and the more we live with them, the more we become like them. We are what we eat. But in this later part of our lives, we're invited to eat something higher, to chew on something more profound. And that is the Word of God. That is the Bible. That is our Lord Jesus and all of His teachings, that we start to look like Him. He is the true light. And when people see us as lights, they're simply seeing Him through us. And so, my brothers and sisters, let them know us by our love. 
Let them know us by our light, but never forget that love and that light, the source is our Lord Jesus. And the more we connect to him, the more we are that love and light for everybody else. God love you. Please stand. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us come before our Heavenly Father with our many prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Catholic Church, for all of our church leaders. We pray for our world and for all of our world leaders, especially during this time of crisis, both with the coronavirus and with this rioting, with this, un this lack of peace. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our families, for those that we love, including our religious order, including our community here in Dunseith and all the communities that are watching, and including our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for the family of Terry and Norma Putra, both living and deceased, let us pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all those watching both here and anywhere else, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Holy Father, hear these prayers and petitions, and in your great love and mercy for us, please answer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Ephraim be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Ephraim and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. And peace to everyone watching. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God.
Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed Ephraim, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. The church will be open until 7 p.m. for anyone who would like private prayer. And I guess I'm mostly talking to those that are watching as I look around and we're all sisters in, in Germany and I won't say the other person. Either. So thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Happy Tuesday, everyone. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.